In today's video, we have a ton more of NHL trade and free agent rumors as we're getting closer and closer to the NHL draft. Today, we're looking further at the Alex DeBrinkett trade scenario in Chicago. We're also exploring trades on the Maple Leafs in regard to their goaltending, in regards to the Ottawa Senators for a top six forward, Jacob Chikorin and Arizona is drawing more attention, including teams like Columbus. Several teams have made front office moves or coaching announcements here today. Plus, we finally have a new GM in San Jose and a few signings as well. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. It's been a crazy couple of days with all kinds of news and lots of rumors floating around as we get closer to the NHL draft. So as I record this on early Tuesday evening, we're about 48 hours away now from the 2022 NHL draft. We're hoping for uh, lots of intrigue, hopefully a few trades, uh, and certainly lots of moves uh, to look forward to into free agency because with the moves that we see here going into the draft and around that time will kind of give us more of an indication of what we should expect once free agency kicks in on July 13th. And a, a really long, drawn-out process here for the Sharks organization, but they have hired Mike Greer. Of course, Mike Greer is a long-time NHL player, played over 14 years, over 1,000 games. Uh, he comes from a family who's had a lot of uh, history and experience in sports executive roles. Uh, his father is a longtime executive in the NFL, and his brother is the current general manager for the uh, NFL's Miami Dolphins. So certainly tons of experience. He probably gets a lot of those skills, honestly, based on family traits here, but certainly somebody who's worked uh, outside of uh, the, after he's retired, he's been in the NHL in various roles. Uh, has worked uh, quite a while as an assistant coach. Uh, most recently worked with the New York Rangers as a hockey ops uh, consultant. So we certainly had, uh, you know, aspirations to get into something bigger. And here we are. We knew part of the Sharks uh, search where they really wanted to find somebody that had some history with the organization. Ideally, a former Shark wasn't necessarily a requirement. It was a very nice to have trait, though. And Greer fits that bill. So uh, certainly, of course, as well. Uh, the other big thing about this that makes it significant as well is he will be the first, very first black GM in NHL history. So, of course, a well-deserved opportunity to Mike Greer. Be interesting to see how he makes out here. Certainly, he's gonna not going to have an easy uh, start here. He's got some tough situation, in my opinion, in San Jose. They have a lot of players on longer-term deals. Um, I don't know if they really want to rebuild, but they certainly need to retool. Uh, they need to find some flexibility on the cap and things like that, and it's not going to be easy. So his first goal here as a GM is, is going to be interesting and challenging for sure. Of course, one of his first duties as well will be to hire a head coach because that has not been completed yet since they just let go of the entire coaching staff, including head coach Bob Bugner, just a short time ago, which I know many people were upset about given how long they waited to do that. So a couple of names to keep in mind for this head coaching role that kind of makes sense based on prior connections and who would be available uh, that I think make a lot of sense is David Quinn, uh, former coach, of course, in Boston at BU, coached the New York Rangers, uh, and then, of course, Jeff Halpern as well, uh, an assistant coach in Tampa uh, who does have connections to Greer, former teammate of his as well. So certainly a couple of names to look out for, but there certainly could be others as well. Now, speaking of another opportunity here where we're going to see something new for the first time in pro hockey, the Seattle Kraken have hired Jessica Campbell, uh, not for their NHL uh, team in Seattle, but for their AHL affiliate, the new team that will be launching this year in Coachella Valley. Uh, the Firebirds will be their team name. Uh, she's going to be an assistant coach, so she will be the first female on an American Hockey League bench. So certainly we've seen a lot of women get opportunities here within the professional sports world and hockey here as of late. And thanks to see. So certainly another step in the right direction here, getting a female on the bench. Uh, the Seattle Crown kind of also announced today that they finally have themselves a goalie coach. It's been a, an area that they've needed to fill here for some time. And they've uh, hired Steve Briere, former goalie coach, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So uh, lots of news in that regard. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers officially announced today as well uh, that Bradshaw will definitely be the associate coach uh, working with John Tortorella. Of course, he comes over from Vancouver. Uh, he's worked with Torts before in the past in Columbus, a uh, longtime NHL uh, assistant coach. So lots of experience on that front. Uh, we've also got uh, news out of the New York Islanders organization in regards to coaching. They've made some announcements in regards to new coach Lane Lambert's uh, staff. Uh, they're bringing on Doug Huda 
and Brian Wiseman as assistant coaches. Of course, Huda was a longtime NHL uh, defenseman and has been a longtime NHL assistant coach as well. Uh, he's coached in Detroit for, like I think, six years. He was in Boston for around 10, including their 2011 Stanley Cup championship. So he'll certainly work with the D. Uh, Wiseman, for the past three years, has worked with the Edmonton Oilers. So they will be the two main uh, assistant coaches here working with Lambert on Long Island. The Toronto Maple Leafs announced a slew of changes when it comes to their front office. They've promoted Haley Wickenheiser to assistant general manager. They've also promoted Ryan Hardy and uh, Daryl Metcalf to assistant general manager as well. Of course, they also have Brandon Pridham, who is Dubas's main um, assistant GM, who is like your cap specialist, basically. Uh, he's basically the, the numbers guy who who is uh, his Dubas's right-hand man, so to speak. Uh, of course, they also had Lawrence Gilman as an AGM. Uh, he's going to be moving to a new role. He's going to have the title of governor and senior vice president for the Toronto Marley. So essentially the Leafs are going to have four assistant GMs. They all have their own kind of area of expertise, so to speak. Uh, Haley Wickenheiser, of course, comes from uh, being the senior vice president of hockey uh, for player development and within the Leafs. So she's going to remain focused on player development. Ryan Hardy will be the AGM for the uh, we're running the Marley's team. And then uh, Daryl Metcalf, who's going to be focused on uh, player research and development. And like I said, then they have Pridham, who's uh, like your capologist, so to speak. So uh, lots of uh, updates in that regard. They also have a new goalie coach, of course, Steve Brier, who I mentioned, has gone to Seattle. They parted ways with him uh, back earlier this offseason. And Curtis Sanford, former NHL goaltender. So, of course, Curtis Sanford's a longtime NHL goaltender. Uh, has spent the last five years working in the Vancouver organization with their American Hockey League affiliate as a goaltender coach. So uh, he will be the new goalie coach there. And they also have hired Matt Molson, former NHL player, former linemate of John Tavares. Of course, is an Ontario native, lives nearby. Uh, he's going to be working with the Leafs now as a pro scout. He's finally retired from hockey. Uh, of course, uh, he spent the last number of years being a fairly good contributor and uh, offensive uh, player in the American Hockey League after having a good run with the Islanders playing on the wing for Tavares for some time. Now, we do have some signings to discuss here today as well as from player signings. Uh, the Montreal Canadiens have announced that they've signed one of their prospects, Xavier Simino. Uh, he gets an AHL-only deal, though. Of course, Simino uh, will only play with Laval, so this is more of a Laval uh, announcement than a Montreal announcement, but essentially under the Habs organization. Uh, he played last year for the Charlottetown Islanders in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League as an overager, put up 86 points in 48 games played, uh, put up 21 additional points in 14 playoff games. Uh, Charlottetown came really close to winning the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League title, fell short to uh, Shawinigan, and of course played four seasons before that with Drummondville. Uh, I've seen Simino play live a few times, really solid looking player. Uh, so he should hopefully thrive and do well here at the American Hockey League level. Uh, some other signings here as well today. The Pittsburgh Penguins have announced that they've signed backup goalie Casey DeSmith to a two-year extension with an average annual value of $1.8 million. This was a little bit surprising. There was a lot of uh, reports that they were going to possibly have a reunion here with Marc-Andre Fleury. Uh, that appears to be uh, not happening. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that felt uh, Fleury wanted to return to end his career in Pittsburgh, and there's certainly uh, a lot that felt that the Penguins would welcome him back with open arms to be the uh, the backup or 1A, 1B scenario with Tristan Jerry, but not so much. I think we should all uh, kind of take a look here and see where else he might go because it's not going to be the Penguins after the signing Casey DeSmith. Uh, the Florida Panthers have also announced today that they've signed uh, young player Alexi Hepo Niemi, who's still kind of not, he's too old to be a prospect, but he's not a full time NHLer either. It's a one year contract. He's a two way deal, uh, seven fifty at the NHL level, a hundred thousand payment at the American Hockey League level, which is where he's probably going to be spending the bulk of the season. And the Avalanche has also uh, started the process of resigning some of their expired contracts. They've signed veteran Andrew Cogliano, who of course was a deadline acquisition, but a pretty important one. Played a strong role. Uh, not only on the ice, but leadership-wise as well, helping this team uh, get to the Stanley Cup. He signs a one-year contract extension, uh, $1.25 million. Uh, he was making a million bucks last year, so that's a slight bump in pay uh, for him to remain 
with the Stanley Cup champions. Now, on to the rumor section of the day. There's all kinds of stuff going through the NHL. We've talked about quite a bit here in the past couple of days. We might as well start with Marc-Andre Fleury. Uh, of course, uh, right now, I know Minnesota is waiting to hear from him uh, to see if he's going to be testing the market or if he'll uh, you know, give them a, more of a shot to sign him. I don't know if they've made an official offer or not, but I know Bill Guerin was hoping to know from Fleury by the draft uh, what his plans were, if he was going to be testing free agency or not, uh, in case they need to make another move to find another goaltender. Now, of course, like I said, this uh, signing of DeSmith is going to rule out a potential return of Flurry to the Penguins. So could it be uh, another franchise besides Minnesota in the mix here? It's believed that at this point, we don't know for sure, but based on what Elliot Freeman was talking about on the 32 Thoughts podcast, it sure sounds like what he's hearing is that Flurry likely will test free agency, and he feels like the Leafs are going to be a legit option here because it sounds like everything is surprisingly very quiet on Jack Campbell. He says that the Leafs have made an offer for an extension to Campbell, uh, which we had talked about and had heard about some time ago. It was either near the end of last offseason or beginning of this current season that just ended. Uh, it was a three-year extension around like 2.75 or so is what the offer was believed to be. Uh, and that was nowhere near acceptable for Campbell's camp. They apparently responded with a much larger number, likely between that five, five and a half to six range, somewhere in there. And things kind of get awkward and kind of quiet. And they've never really made official offers one way or another back and forth since then. There's been conversations, sure, but it appears as though things are just eerily quiet and barring some kind of drastic change, many feel that there's almost a foregone conclusion now that Jack Campbell will not be re-signing with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So would a guy like Fleury be an option? I mean, there's not going to be a lot of options out there. If you look at the Maple Leafs, if, you know, you're without Campbell now, you have no confidence in Peter Morazic, who else is going to be available? There's reports that the Avalanche are working really hard on signing Darcy Kemper and Valeri Nishushkin. So if those two guys re-up in Colorado, um, then they're going to be off the market. So that takes Kemper out. You, you know, that's you're already down another option because there's not a lot of grade A options on the free agent market. Could they maybe go after Billy Huso? It's a possibility, but they're going to have some tough competition out there. Um, but he would be an option. Um, and then Fleury is one of your other main players you could talk to without swinging a trade. And to be honest, from when you look around, it doesn't look like there's a lot of, you know, 1A goaltenders on the trade market. I know John Gibson, who we've talked about before, who's maybe not necessarily the, the best option for the Leafs, would be available, but we've heard reports from Friedman that um, they've had conversations before and they were never really close on making a deal. It didn't seem like Toronto really had much of what Anaheim wanted for a return. So uh, it really makes you wonder what the Leafs are going to do here, but Fleury could be a legit option. Uh, there could be some other teams out there that will inquire on his services as well. Uh, just believe that the Avalanche would want to talk to Fleury as well as a fallback option if Kumper does not sign. Uh, but it seems like that's getting closer. Uh, Friedman said he wonders if a lot of the goaltenders and their agents and things are kind of maybe all talking together, kind of see where all the open chairs are going to be, so to speak, around the league for starting netminders and see what is going to be up here because there's going to be teams that are going to be looking that may not even be planning on it because the guy that they were hoping to sign might not be available. But uh, the Maple Leafs are going to be in tough here, but Fleury could be a legit option for Toronto. I don't know what he's going to want for money, though. That's the, the tough part. If they're not real keen on uh, paying Campbell, you know, 5 to $6 million, is Fleury going to want similar money? I don't know. Time will tell, but it looks as though Campbell to the Oilers is a real possibility, and Fleury you know, might be an option for the Leafs, but we don't really know where things would stand if they get to chance to negotiate. Now, when it comes to Alex Dabrinkit, uh, the latest reports there are certainly that the Flyers and the Hawks have had conversations, but it's believed that the Flyers are, appear to be not so content right now with having that number five overall pick in the draft be part of the package to make the acquisition. So uh, that's not a given that they're going to pull that off. Now, things can always change here, but on the 32 Thoughts podcast today, that was the latest intel that American and Friedman were hearing that they're definitely talking for sure but uh, the Flyers are weighing multiple options. They certainly would like to have a run at Johnny Gaudreau, assuming he hits the open market as well. And the other thing that they've talked about is that the Flyers, uh, with where they're at in their franchise, they were 40 points out of a playoff spot. They may want to make multiple moves, which is going to require 
freeing up cap space if they can do it. And it's not going to be easy, but they might need more than one key player brought in here. I think it's fair to say that they would. Um, so I don't know that realistically, though, could they pull off a Debrinket trade and a Gaudreau signing? That would be pretty tough to do because they just don't have the space for one. And are they going to have the assets to make the trade as well? Like It just depends on what they're willing to part with. If they're not willing to part with the fifth overall pick, that might be a tough chore for Chicago to be able to be accepting to make. So we'll see where things go, but those two are definitely talking. When it comes to Debrinket, there's definitely other teams that are reportedly expressing interest, but the Flyers are the main team we're hearing about right now, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be the ones to end up pulling this off. Quick news uh, update out of Boston when it comes to trades as well. It looks like winger Jake DeBrusque has officially rescinded his trade request. So I guess now that Bruce Cassidy has gone, they've seen enough change, and he had a good season there. Um, Nebraska is not asking to be traded from the Bruins organization any longer. So that's, I guess, good news on their front if they're happy with how he played. Of course, he signed a contract, a two-year extension, uh, a bit below his qualifying offer, which I know in, in part was good for himself because he hadn't really earned uh, bigger money but at the same time was good for the Bruins so if they did want to make a trade uh, it was certainly more reasonable to get the deal done Uh, teams didn't have to worry about whether or not he was signed and if he'd signed for less than his qualifying offer but it doesn't mean 100% that he won't be traded I don't know that they really would anyways considering that like I said before they're thin on the wings as is they have a lot of injuries to deal with and if he wants to stay and he was a good player for them last year it only makes sense that they don't move him but it's not something that he wishes to see happen here any longer uh when it comes to jacob chikrin in arizona uh there's not a ton of chatter going on around the player uh certainly something that the arizona coyotes and and the player i think would both like to accomplish but it sounds like uh bill armstrong in arizona still willing to be patient and if it means not moving him just yet he'll certainly take his time and hang on here but the last reports we had heard regarding the player was that he really wanted to be dealt before next season to be able to move on uh so of course that's important to him but latest reports here out of columbus and brian hedger indicate that there could be conversations going on between the jackets and the coyotes around chikrin maybe going to the blue jackets elliot friedman's already been reporting which makes sense uh, based on how the last season went that the jackets would like to upgrade their blue line and adding a top four defense it's something that's important to them this uh, offseason. Apparently, they had been in on the Ryan McDonough trade talks with Tampa, but of course, where McDonough had a lot of control over where he went, it didn't seem like it was something that was going to materialize and work out for them, but they were interested. So they've now kind of turned their attention to uh, a player like Chickren, who's obviously makes more sense for them anyways, who's younger, but obviously going to have to give up more assets than the team would have had to do for the services of Ryan McDonough. Now, when it comes to Chick Renault, uh, there's belief that the number 12 overall pick the Columbus Jack Blue Jackets have could very well be in play. Uh, the reports from Brian Hedger indicated that there was comments from Yermo Kekalainen saying that that pick could possibly be in play if it brought them uh, you know, a, a solid, young, impact player. Well, he certainly fits that bill. He's 23 years old, and he's got term on his contract, which was something else that Kekline and has indicated. A player with term who can be helpful now and into the future is what he would want if he was going to consider making that trade. So, obviously, the Jackets have accumulated a decent uh, group of other prospects here in the last couple of years. Perhaps they can uh, make a package for Chikrin around that number 12 pick, uh, throw in a few other items there, and maybe they can get the deal done. It's been something that's been dragging on for a long time. There's definitely going to be other teams in the mix for sure, but right now it seems like uh, Columbus might be in the process of having some trade talks for him. Now, when it comes to the uh, Ottawa Senators, uh, they were in on the Kevin Fiala negotiations. Uh, as we know, they were linked to Minnesota. They were scouting each other extensively late last season. Uh, things never materialized with Fiala in that trade, mainly due to the fact that Ottawa didn't want to meet the contract demands. I don't know how Fiala would have felt about signing the contract, but it doesn't matter because Ottawa didn't really want to go as long a term as LA was willing to give them anyway. So when you factor that in, they're certainly looking for a similar kind of player. They want a top Top six forward who can play on the wing, ideally on the right side, but depending on the player, some players play their offside, so it's not a you know an absolute certainty which way they need to shoot here. But at the end of the day, the, the Sens need a top six uh, and the number seven overall pick very well might be included if that's going to happen. Otherwise, they they really need a top four 
right shot defenseman. If they, either of those can be made for the right deal, then that's the pick that will be moved to make it happen. But apparently one player they do have a lot of interest in, uh, which I've seen different reports on, and it sounds like they've had some conversations around it as well. I don't know how far they're going to move along here, but according to what I can gather from some of the reports from Bruce Garriock, it sounds like uh, Clayton Keller is a very much a player of interest for the Senators. I mean, Clayton Keller is a player with term. He's, uh, you know, he, he had a great season last year. The contract's not ridiculous. He's young, he's fast, uh, and he can fit well with the young core in Ottawa. So if it's something that they can pull off, I think he would be an absolutely terrific player to uh, to make an addition here to that top six group. Uh, another player that kind of comes to mind that they might want to pivot to if that doesn't work out, this is just my opinion, would be a player like Connor Garland, who's reportedly available in Vancouver as well. Not exactly the same kind of player, but certainly somebody who can uh, be tough to play against, has a really a solid motor that never stops, and he can chip in offensively as well. Uh, not the biggest guy, but they have some other players there that already have some good size. They could mix in a player like him that might be a good fit. Uh, we'll see what they do, but a player like that or Clayton Keller, uh, who seems to be one of their primary targets right now, but we don't know for sure that the Coyotes will trade Keller. I think for the most part, uh, if I had to list all their players for players they would definitely trade versus like maybes and no's, I think he would be a maybe. I think Bill Armstrong will entertain uh, offers on just about anything. If the offer is right, then I think he has to consider it. So we will see what they offer. They have tons of prospects. They have lots of picks. And they very well could put together a package that would tempt the Coyotes to pull the trigger there, in my opinion. So let me know your thoughts on all of this down in the comments. And we'll discuss further all kinds of news. Lots of rumors here coming up. So we're less than 48 hours away now from the draft. Things are bound to heat up here. We might see some trade activity in the next little while here as well. And there'll be lots to talk about leading into the draft. So let me know your thoughts on everything down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32. To NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.